Well, I'm sure that we will have some more folks uh, join us in the coming minutes, but just uh, to honor everyone's time, we will uh, get started. Again, my name is Kyle Christofalo uh, with Churches for Middle East Peace. I lead our uh, Washington, D.C. office and the work that we are doing uh, with, uh, the, with Congress, the administration, as well as with NGO partners here in Washington, D.C. You know, right now, of course, we have been doing a lot of work in response to the current situation in Israel and Gaza. Uh, but this uh, webinar today was a conversation that we had planned before the events of October 7th and really wanted to continue uh, to, to, to move forward with it because this is such an important conversation and a community that we feel uh, there needs to be a lot more knowledge and awareness of uh, here in the United States. So I'm really honored to have um, with me uh, today two distinguished speakers joining from the Assyrian Aid Society who will be uh, presenting with us about uh, their community and the work that they are doing. So I'll uh, briefly introduce them. Uh, I, just a note that if you are, uh, we will have time at the end for questions from the audience. So if you have uh, questions, please use the Q&A function to uh, put them there and we will get to as many as we can. Uh, also, uh, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat to let us know where you are, are joining from. So I'm really, again, pleased to have with us today uh, Carmela Borishan, who is a member of the board of the Assyrian Aid Society of America. Uh, Ms. Borshan was born uh, in Iran and came to the U.S. as a student when she was 18, and she has had a, a career uh, professionally in the healthcare industry and also has been working tirelessly uh, to help educate uh, Americans on uh, the Assyrian community. And so we'll hear from her in just a second, but also introducing our speaker who is joining us uh, from Iraq, Mr. Yunan Marhail, who serves as the president of the Ameri of the Armenian Aid Society, Assyrian, excuse me, Aid Society. He's held that position since 2021. He studied at the University of Duhuk in Iraq, uh, where he received a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. And after completing that degree, he joined the Assyrian Aid Society, where he worked uh, in the reconstruction department before assuming this position. So we'll hear from Carmela, who will give us a bit of an overview uh, for those who are watching and might not be familiar with uh, who are uh, who are the Assyrians. There, there might be people here who are watching today or in the future when this is up on our, our YouTube channel that are not as familiar uh, with the Assyrians. So if you could start us off, Carmela, we'd be very appreciative. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle, for this opportunity and with the respect that I have for the victims of Israel and Gaza war. Um, Assyrians are indigenous to Mesopotamia, a territory covering modern day Iraq, southeast Turkey, west of Iran and northeast Syria. Archaeological discoveries prove that Assyrians have settled in northern Iraq since the Temple of Asher was built more than 5000 years ago with remains still standing south of Mosul. In time, the Assyrians established one of the greatest and uh, ancient empires with accomplishments in all aspects of life. Considered the unique irrigation system re represented by King Sennharib Aqueduct that is still visible today in Iraq. The Ashurbanipal greatest library of the time, sophisticated administration system, to manage their vast empire that extended from Iran to Egypt and from Armenia to Arabia. And contributions to the field of astrology, architect and art that they still fill the world um, museums such as Baghdad, British, Stumble, Berlin, New York, Chicago and Lower Museum. The Assyrian art influenced the architect of various Persian dynasties seen in Ekbatan and Persepolis, police currently now in Iran. U.S. Senator John Nimrod once said, one only has to take a shovel 
and dig it into the ground, and the only history found will be that of Assyrians. Mesopotamia is the ancestral land of Abraham and resting place of prophet Nahum. And the only history found, I'm sorry, I apologize. The book of Jonah is about his mission in Assyria. As the apostles started their missionary work, after the Pentecost, Apostle Thomas visited Assyria and Assyrian people collectively converted to Christianity and the Church of the East was established. Dr. Ron Susak explains that Assyria as an empire building for the full millennium until her fall in 1612 BC. About 600 years later, Assyrians embraced Jesus Christ and took the sword of the spirit and committed themselves to the Great Commission and became the greatest evangelistic force. From 700s, they were slowly pushed to obscurity by the dominant forces. The expansion of the Church of the East was so vast that it reached China, so the Nestorian monument of the 7th century in China, Xi'an, China, is an eyewitness at this time and day. Dr. Ron Susak, in his book, The Assyrian Prophecy, mentioned, they advanced the gospel so rapidly that by the end of 12th century, the Assyrian Christians have had outgrown the Greek Orthodox and Roman Catholic Church combined. The rise and conquest of Islam in the 7th century, the destruction of the Mongols of the 13th century, and the invasion of Tamerlan in the 14th century devastated the Assyrian Christians. At every genocide, they have faced multi-generational persecutions, looting, slavery, forced conversion, rape, and many of their literature texts and learning centers were destroyed. Assyrians actively pursued statehood during World War I in the League of Nations and during and after World War II in the United Nation as rightful indigenous people of the land. The Allied forces offered them protection and self-rule before World War I, but the British did not keep their promises to the Assyrians during Sykes Picot Agreement in 1916, while the 1920 Treaty of Severus promised a homeland for Assyro Chaldeans, just as they did for other people. However, the British did not follow with their promises in 1923 Treaty of Lausanne and dropped those promises because of the rise of Ataturk in Turkey and the establishment of Iraq in 1921. The Assyrians continued to serve the interests of Iraq and protected its sovereignty during and after World War II and saved Iraq from falling into the hands of Nazi Germany in 1941. Assyrians, yet again, were victims to the conflict in the region prior to Saddam and during his reign, as illustrated in Dr. Alda Benjamin's book, Assyrians in Modern Iraq. During Saddam Hussein's Arabization efforts, Assyrians came under constant pressure to sign ethnic identity correction forms, relinquishing their ethnicity and registering officially as Arabs. All Assyrian schools were closed during Saddam's regime. However, in 1991, during no-fly zone, the Assyrian Aid Society began its work in the northern region by establishing the Assyrian schools, which all the curriculums are still taught in Assyri Assyriac language. The Assyrian Aid Society was established in 1991 as a humanitarian organization, acting as a de facto governmental entity for the Assyrians' needs, which Yonan Lazar will elaborate on the activities of the organization. Assyrian Aid Society of America, also was established around that time and has currently seven chapters, raises fund about $1 million annually, which 92 cents of a dollar reaches the Syrian Aid Society of Iraq. 
Thank you, Carmela, for that overview. Um, I'm, uh, and we will also try to put, you know, in the chat some of the resources that are shared. I'm wondering if you could uh, tell us a little bit um, about some of sort of the the recent uh, struggles and uh, that the Assyrian community is is facing. Are these new struggles? Are they part of a larger history? We look forward to hearing more about that. Thank you. They say history repeats itself. Let me go back to 2003. President Bush promised freedom and prosperity to all Iraqi people before the 2003 U.S. invasion in Iraq. But from 2004 to 2010, Assyrian Christian faced daily killing, kidnapping, land grabbing, threats, and bombing of about 50 churches, which have been documented, especially in Baghdad, Kirkuk, and Mosul. In 2014, ISIS invaded Mosul, Nineveh Plain, and Sanjar, as the Assyrian Christian and Yazidis went through yet another genocide. I suggest that you read uh, Fred Epram's book, The Betrayal of the Powerless, to become familiar with what the Assyrians went through during these dark, this dark period, and how their plea and demands for their survival were not honored by Iraqi government and Washington. The following are the massacres that Assyrian faced in 20 and 21st century. 1950, 15, what is commonly referred to as Armenian genocide, where 75% of Assyrian population was slaughtered by the Ottoman government and their Kurdish allies. 1933, Semele massacre of Assyrians was carried out by the Iraqi government, led by Kurdish general and certain Kurdish and Arab tri tribes. 1969, uh, Surya massacre of Assyrians carried out by Iraqi army, and 2014, ISIS genocide of Syrians and Yazidis. Assyrians were left defenseless after Kurdish Peshmerga forced to disarm Assyrians of the Nineveh plain two weeks before ISIS invasion, claiming that they, Peshmerga, will protect them. The central government forces did not protect the Assyrians, Yazidis, and its citizens, as they were left in the mercy of ISIS without protection. ISIS marked the Christian homes with the letter N in Arabic for the word Nazarene in reference to Jesus of Nazareth. ISIS then gave the Christians three options to leave, convert, or die. An estimated of about 2.5 million Assyrians lived in their ancestral lands in modern-day Iraq prior to 2003. Today, following continuous ethnic and religious cleansing campaign, roughly 200 um, until today, the number is dwindling at an alarming rate. The struggles that we <clears throat> currently face or the reasons why Assyrians are leaving are land theft, which 94 lands and 54 villages were taken away from Assyrians, lack of support of Assyrian public schools and education system, lack of replacement of teachers as they vacate their positions. We hire lecturers, so we pay the lecturer's salaries and print the Assyrian books, um, the Assyrian school textbooks, which are not covered by the government. Instead, funds are raised in diaspora. And there is inflammatory information in the KRG history curriculum against Assyrians, by praising the murderer of Assyrian patriarch Mar Benjamin Shimon as a Kurdish national hero. There is a religious struggles or Islamization through existing laws that if one parent becomes Muslim, the teenage children become Muslims automatically. There was a political discrimination, there is political discrimination, the voting system them caused loss of dedicated Christian seats in the Iraqi parliament, which obliterated their voice. The same thing happens in the northern Iraq Kurdish region parliament. Until today, until recently, Assyrians in Iraq enjoyed protection under Nineveh Protection Unit, which protected Assyrians in Nineveh Plain. This military unit was dissolved due to the election process in Iraq, leaving them vulnerable and currently being harassed by other militias present in the region. There is lack of support for the Assyrian archaeological sites or preservation of Assyrian artifacts, 
leaving them for erosion, and most dangerously claiming these rooted Assyrian sites as re and remains as Kurdish. There is discrimination in hiring and employment. Businesses in the northern Iraq region are not granted permits unless a Kurd owns 50% of the business. Lack of security and safety, lack of trust to be protected as citizens of Iraq, fear of persecution, looming ISIS ideologies, constant um, harassment still exist as daily as a daily struggle. Struggle in obtaining permits to build their own houses. Lack of basic infrastructures such as roads, street lights, irrigation channel, and agriculture, which you and will explain how a Syrian aid society takes care of these. Placement of checkpoints by the Assyrian villages to deter tourists or bulk delivery of supplies and placing curfew, causing serious challenges and struggles during emergencies. Setting Assyrian farmlands on fire. Turkish airstrikes scorch Assyrian farmlands and damages the infrastructure of their houses. Denial of requests for expansion of schoolyards or farmlands that is owned by them, by Assyrians. Changing the demographics of Nineveh Plain, causing increased harassment of Assyrians. So there are two different kinds of persecution in Iraq. In central and southern Iraq, there is a continuous fear of religious persecution. In the north within the Kurdish region, there is a soft ethnic cleansing. The Syrians are not treated as the indigenous people of the land, even though most officials continuously declare that the Assyrian Christians are the original people of Iraq. Article 125 of the Iraqi constitution continues to be neglected and not implemented. This execution of the article will allow the means for the Assyrian Christians to govern and protect themselves in peace. Time is running out on the indigenous Assyrians in Iraq. Actions must be taken now before these indigenous people abandon their homeland and Iraq becomes like Turkey and Iran, where churches, archaeological sites, ancient language of Aramaic, and more than 6,000 years of history become the forum pages in history book. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmela, for that history and for that challenge. Uh, we, are, again, are appreciative of, of the work that you are doing and uh, for the uh, history lesson, as well as the charge for what we can do today. So I'm really I'm honored to now hear from uh, Yunnan, who will give us a bit of an overview of the direct work that the Assyrian Aid Society is doing. And uh, just a reminder that if you've joined us since we started, if you have questions, we will try uh, to get to some questions toward the end of our time together. So please uh, do use the Q&A function if there are questions you would like for either uh, Carmela or Yunan. So Yunan, I'm going to turn it over to you now. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Church for Middle East uh, Peace for this opportunity that allowed us to show uh, our work. Uh, this is uh, my presentations about uh, what uh, we work at uh, during uh, 2020, 2013-23. Uh, we starting with a senior society introduction summary timeline a senior society uh, year 2020-23 it's a, diff, uh, a list of the projects implemented education farmer support health and material livelihood infrastructure maintenance health uh, mental health uh, non-food items supply uh, cultural uh, supporting uh, uh, civil society organizations uh, Baghdad tragedy a senior school uh, Overview of Assyrian uh, of ASR Iraq schools. Other question. 
We starting uh, introduction. Has seen as you said, established in 1991, charitable humanitarian non-profit organization uh, operating under the principle of voluntary qualitative uh, actions to achieve a material goal through the development programs, capacity building, relief, education, and culture. Main office of Assyrian Society are located in Dohok, uh, Iraq, uh, Dohok City. Uh, we have a branch office located in Baghdad, Danimir Plain. We have uh, 25 uh, staff uh, person. Uh, also, we have focal point in, in several uh, regions uh, like Nineveh Plain, Baghdad, uh, Kirkuk, Erbil, Semele, Zakho, Nahla, Sapna, Barwar, these focal points is volunteer. Uh, organization in this uh, special consultative starts with the economic and social concerns science 2011. Also, a senior society nominated for the Nobel uh, Peace Prize in, uh, to the, uh, in 2016. Uh, a senior society have five sister organizations, uh, a senior society of America, a senior, uh, a senior society of Canada, of Australia, and of uh, Sweden. Sweden and a senior society of uh, New Zealand. Uh, this is a sum, uh, summary timeline. Uh, a senior society, 32 years of achieve, achievement and materials, uh, of uh, achievement of materials, uh, uh, since the beginning uh, of the, just a minute, since the beginning. Uh, of the, uh, of the funding, the senior has had experienced uh, several. So it was just one. So in the middle of its, uh, of its funding, the senior society has experienced uh, several periods that have affected uh, its uh, a mechan a mechan mechanism of work and it is a service in various fields in which it has, it has worked. The first, the beginning and the foundation. The ASI was established in the spring of 1991 after the Second World Gulf, uh, Gulf War and the March 1991 uprising. The Senior Arts Society Iraq was established, exp expanded, uh, and organized, organized uh, its materials programs to support the displacement populations of the indigenous community. That's, the support including the distribution of materials, aid, food, and uh, medicines, uh, provision of medical service through the mobile, mobile clinics uh, in the villages. Of the displacement and the care support for these in need uh, of major medical treatment. The ASI also uh, assistant in the reconstruction of the damaged shelters due to the war on the provisions of uh, Agri agricultural uh, supplies and tools to support the community li uh, communities' life livelihoods. livelihoods. One of the main tax uh, taken by AASI in the 1992 was the support provided uh, in establishing, uh, establishing and maintaining the senior education, which was newly introduced in the Kurdistan Regional Government (KRG). The support in including building schools, printing uh, curriculum, uh, provision of stationaries, transportations, and dorms for the uh, students. And the provision, uh, and the provision of teachers' wives' uh, trans, uh, translations uh, into uh, Syrian. The Syrian, uh, the ASI, also supported the youth union and women union and the cultural and social centers uh, to undergo uh, their activities to provide a service to our community. They, the, the ASI sister organizations uh, uh, were the main supported in ensuring the continued service of the ASI in the homeland through regular uh, fundraising and donations, uh, particularly uh, for the Syrian education process. Uh, work continued uh, develop, 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 de developing uh, the organization work in various fields and expansions it is activities in include various fields of of speciality. Second, uh, from 2003-2012, the fall uh, of the former regime and the beginning of the a new era with the new authority. After the fall of the for of the former regime in 2000, uh, 2003 and the trans, uh, transition to dealing with a new, uh, with a new authorities. And the presence of the deteriorating security situation in the capital Baghdad and the other province 
which led to the displacement of thousands of our uh, people because of the unstable security situation where the village of our people in the north and in the plains even the displaced the families of their relatives and friends in their homes and providing them which uh, which uh, uh, provided with them uh, with the heaven that is i and divided by the supporting this family which uh, with the humanitarians and medical assistance and uh, securing a permanent and uh, decent uh, shelter for uh, them and providing them livelihood opportunities. Third, third uh, 2012 uh, reception, uh, reception of refugee families from Syria in uh, 2012, uh, after the deteriorations of the security situation in Syria, many of our communication uh, community from Syria led to the KRG, the ASI provided the needed materials and medical support to nearly 200 families in, in their uh, displacement area inside and outside the whole government. And the extremely uh, vulnerable families were provided with a shelter at the ASI dormitories uh, for more to, uh, than two years uh, until, the, until they were resettled into the third countries. Fourth, 2014 ISIS, uh, ISIS, con uh, ISIS control, control and uh, liberation operations. The year 2014 carried a great uh, tragedy for our people where it is, was uh, subjected uh, to the heinous uh, displacement uh, represented uh, by the uh, uh, brutal, brutal actions of the Islamic uh, State of Iraq and Syria ISIS. This uh, ISIS uh, starting on June 10, 2014, and beyond, which uh, took control of Nineveh Plain province, uh, Salah Haddin, and part of Kirkuk and displacement people from their areas of uh, habitual uh, residence in Mosul, the Mosul city, and the Nineveh Plain. Within a few days, more than 250,000 individuals were displacement and the land was emptied uh, of its indigenous inhabit inhabitants to become, for the first time without Christians, the ISI had to exhaust uh, all uh, its resources uh, to serve more than 9,000 families in the Doha government alone, in addition uh, to the families who have taken refuge in Erbil, Kirkuk, and Baghdad. The main mission of the ISI was to provide uh, safe and uh, a significant uh, shelter for the for the families. In addition, in addition to basic humanitarian aid, the support of the ASI continued after the liberations and of these areas where it uh, encouraged uh, by a volunteer uh, vol 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 volunteer return of the families to their areas of region and stick uh, to their land there. <coughs> Uh, through the provisions of several projects and uh, the rehabilitation of the collapsed infrastructure. Five, uh, 2019 COVID-19 COVID pandemic. The year, uh, the year of uh, the 2019 brought another challenge and a great need uh, not only for Iraq, but for the world due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which decreased international support for uh, for most of the organization work in the area, including the ASI, like other countries. Uh, Iraq faced the several lockdown, the loss of job for the most people, and the decisions uh, which uh, added up to the pre existing uh, deteriorated uh, economic situation. Uh, the daily workers were the most affected, in the addition to the government employees uh, in the KRG who were uh, already received half salary for around five years. The need increased among the hosting uh, community and is a displaced one, as the last one uh, is not as uh, uh, convey conveys it uh, to return to their area of region. The SI uh, did its uh, best to support the needy, uh, needy families uh, by Prioritizing life saving assistance, uh, which include the provisions of uh, personal protection 
protection equipment PPE, which include hand sanitizers, pass masks, and shelves, <coughs> hygiene kits, and multivitamins, accompanied with a key a message and flares to rise <coughs> awareness to COVID-19 prevention and complaining additional. The ASI Mobile Clinic continue to its uh, service of uh, primary medical care and medications provision, also food products <coughs> were distributed to the this family. Second, uh, second uh, 2000, uh, uh, 2023, Baghdad tragedy. On the night uh, of September 2062, uh, uh, a major fire broke in out in a wedding hall in Baghdad, Alhamdani district, resulting in the, in the death of uh, 131 of our people today. And uh, there were more than 120 injured. Uh, from the first day, as I was uh, present in Baghdad to provide support and assistant, uh, and assist a medical team consists of nine uh, nurses and a doctor was for me to visit the in uh, injured uh, individual in their homes and treat them uh, while providing the medical <coughs> medication and medical uh, supplies. Is also uh, conducted a survey to co collect uh, information on the injured individuals and uh, identify their needs. Additional areas are assistant in filling uh, the gaps uh, in terms of medication, medical supply, and equipment at uh, the hospital in Dohok, uh, Baghdad, Ninveh, and uh, Erbil. Also, when, uh, when uh, 100 food baskets were distributed to the families of the deceased uh, victims in Baghdad, as uh, a, uh, as a, uh, gist, uh, gist, uh, a gestures uh, to uh, elevate uh, their expenses uh, during the funeral, and uh, 30 companies of the injured individuals in Erbil Dog Erbil hospitals. Uh, were assistant uh, financially to support their needs while taking uh, care of their pensions. This is the summary of timeline. This is a list of projects that implemented in 2022-2023. We have uh, uh, several uh, cate uh, <coughs> category and we have sector, sector, uh, Education and sector farmers, uh, <clears throat> farmer support, health, humanitarian, infrastructure, livelihood, maintenance, uh, mental health, non food items, supply, culture, supporting uh, civil, <coughs> uh, civil uh, society organization, Baghdad Raji, the, the last one. So we started with education. We have uh, uh, projects uh, and uh, location of uh, town, city, and uh, village. A number of beneficiaries benefit from this project. And we have there in this uh, column, we have uh, donors. Uh, uh, the education is, uh, is uh, supporting the uh, Assyrian school. Assyrian school in the KRG, we have 24 uh, schools. Uh, we have uh, uh, about 1,824 uh, 1, uh, uh, students. These uh, stu uh, students are uh, uh, seniors from uh, first class to 12. The project we implemented uh, is uh, pay lectures, uh, pay lectures wages uh, for their uh, and uh, and their, and their uh, transportation uh, school. We have about uh, 95 uh, lectures. Uh, we, we, we pay these uh, lectures wages uh, in Erbil and the Hawk. Uh, and uh, we have uh, maintenance school, uh, like uh, uh, different school about, I think it's a uh, night school. We have uh, several projects. Uh, we have honor outstanding student, uh, school rehabilitation, school rehabilitation, Harira, we school uh, Berta, uh, Akit, uh, Nasibin, uh, Ur school, uh, uh, providing my school uh, for schools in Al Kush and uh, Bahra school, Al Mara from Siak in Baghdad, Arbaelo in Erbil. And uh, we have uh, supply needs for school, 
uh, we have uh, supplied five uh, Syrian high school with uh, science laboratory equipment. We have uh, about 28 project. Uh, this is a support just for school. And this uh, sector is uh, farmer support. Uh, we support the farmer in the <clears throat> in our villages. Uh, uh, construction irrigation channel, construction irrigation, installing irrigation pipeline waters, and installing solar panel uh, for the borehole of irrigation farm. Construction irrigation, extending uh, new drip water. Extends different project. This is. Uh, name of village and beneficiary and donors. And uh, this sector is health. Uh, most of uh, project of our project is a uh, mobile clinic. Uh, mobile clinic, we have a team of a doctor and pharmacy and we have one with uh, a medical service. Uh, each month we visiting the vulnerable uh, villages of our village in North Iraq and in Nineveh Plain to provide a uh, service. Uh, uh, um, this is uh, about uh, well, the six project. And we have a material project. The material project is a uh, distribution of food, uh, uh, food and health items, uh, distribution of food, uh, food items and displacement family for water, uh, distribution of food items, uh, provided financial uh, for Syrian refugee, provided uh, financial to the people in need, Provide the financial support for this displacement people in Bersive, provide the financial support to displacement people in Bersive, also provide financial assistance to the people in need. And infrastructure is uh, uh, lighting and installing for 35 here, uh, 49 uh, for in Bersive, 49 in the Doha Kanibi Plain, 18 in the Berejani Armuta. This is uh, installing. Uh, uh, street lights uh, for the uh, for the street for the for the villages, supply and installing cable for generator and infrastructure. Livelihood is opening a business factory for protecting robot uh, breakfast, uh, sheep uh, sheep breeding uh, sheep breeding and behaviors uh, aquarium uh, agriculture uh, sheep breeding. This project is a micro loss project. We uh, uh, we implemented in several villages, Nala, Zahwe, Nishke, the benefit uh, and uh, more project is, uh, is uh, uh, supported by us, uh, CIS Sud of America. Maintenance is maintenance generator, uh, mental health, uh, Iraq, uh, Iraqi human rights, uh, non food items, supply capture. Uh, we have uh, supported uh, serious uh, tragedy. This is pictures, it's uh, what what we show in the list, there is so, some of picture, but distribution lectures, which has been transportation school, a serial education of uh, academic years, 2021-2022-2023. This is uh, maintenance of school, uh, different school. This is in Bahatme, this is in Nala, this is in Zaho. Uh, so this is supply uh, supply for different uh, school slides, uh, heaters, uh, water uh, filters, uh, lab, uh, science lab, uh, laptop projects, uh, books, and different projects. This is a project distribution of school supply for 2010 students of a senior school is station, stationaries. Uh, this project is uh, extended uh, water network uh, and uh, and maintenance uh, <coughs> uh, roof of some house. This project is a uh, construction irrigation channel in uh, different uh, place uh, in uh, in uh, Dehe, in Sapna, in Barwar, in Nala. Uh, this is uh, <coughs> this is mobile team. Uh, providing medical uh, medical service through the mobile clinic, including providing medical examina uh, examination and medical for uh, 5,712 uh, 5, uh, 5, uh, individual in the for 10 more. This is a question for the hygiene case. This is uh, this project is installing uh, <coughs> street light. This live view project. This is a micro loan project. This is a maintenance generator, burn holes. Uh, this is uh, Iraqi human rights defense in Baghdad. 
this project for one uh, one uh, one year. This is a gift for kids uh, for Christmas for three three thousand four hundred. This uh, uh, distribution gas for uh, for villages gas for heating. This is uh, we have project uh, for uh, diapers for kids for uh, for displacement. This is for this uh, ultra tree project and support uh, also. This is a project of uh, for supporting uh, uh, Huyada uh, uh, soccer tournament and uh, this is camping and uh, scout camping. This project uh, in the Baghdad in the before uh, this uh, this year uh, this month uh, mobile clinic and uh, this is team of uh, nurses and doctor and distribution for uh, this is uh, percentage of project sector uh, most of projects is, is support education and uh, farmer support and the next materials uh, this is like. Uh, which project we have implemented. This is our overview of the beneficiaries. Uh, 52 individuals with a disciple, uh, 95 lectures, 16 soccer team, uh, 4,000 families, uh, 2,014 babies. 23,000 individuals, uh, 4,000 students, uh, 691 elderly, uh, farmers, uh, scout, author, uh, transportation school. This is uh, <clears throat> a list of uh, our school and the number of students. Uh, this is link, it's uh, our uh, project tracker, what uh, we, project we needed. This is a link for donation. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think take more than three minutes, maybe. Thank you, uh, thank you. for that overview of the work that you are all doing. And uh, we will include, um, we've already, I believe, uh, included some of the links in the, the chat already, but we will also have that in some of the follow-up materials. So we do have some time uh, for questions from the audience. There is one that has been put in the Q&A, but just a reminder that uh, if you have any other questions, please use that feature. Um, so I'll I'll get to the Q&A question uh, to start, and then I, I have a couple of questions uh, as well. Uh, so there was a question uh, about if, if, if either of you could speak about the Turkish bombings and subsequent evacuations of villages in the Nakhla Valley and Tehuk area. Um, is there any effort people can support to end these uh, attacks? or ways to provide support to the villagers. So I don't know, Carmela, if you want to speak to that or if Yunan does. Yeah, I um, Yunan can also explain if he wishes, but it does cause a lot of harm. It scorches uh, some of our farmlands. Uh, have you done anything? I have presented it to International Religious Freedom and also to, we had a meeting with State Department members. It was presented by Yonan and I. Um, the issue is uh, Turkey is not only bombarding the northern Iraq, it also bombarding northeast of Syria. With that said, um, they are attacking uh, PKKs that are... Um, Kurdish organization that is um, in, is not aligned with Turkey. So Turkey is trying to uh, destroy them. But unfortunately, that region is populated with Assyrian villages. And also Turkey being part of NATO team, I'm not sure how, how much freedom there is to tame it. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, Iraq's central government uh, is not supporting its own people. It's very weak. It's in... Uh, it's uh, they're not they're not doing anything to tell you the truth. People have been relocated from that region, uh, which is very sad because they're leaving their lands uh, that they have been living there for hundreds of years. Thank you. 
Yunan, is there anything you'd like to add or to that question? Uh, no, because Carmel is say all about uh, okay. what happened. What happened be, uh, in our village in the north? Yeah, uh, the deflection is uh, in the our village in Barwar, uh, Nala. Yeah, more uh, most of the families relocated from village to the city because. Uh, this deflection because between bank account to them. Thank you. So, Carmel, I'm wondering if you could, now that we sort of have the history and some of the work that the Assyrian Aid Society is doing, uh, we we know and we've shared in the, the, the chat the ways that they could donate to the organization, but what are some other ways that folks here in the U.S. Uh, could offer uh, support to the Assyrian people? Well, uh, first, it's pray <laughs> for a nation that is um, an ancient nation. Uh, donations will help us tremendously. Um, I am um, working with International Religious Freedom. We have done presentations. Um, we need to, I actually need to see if churches or other people can invite us to go do presentation to raise awareness of this nation and the struggles that they're facing. The pressure needs to be on uh, the, the government of Iraq and the KRG because the uh, United States has some power there, still have power there, and they can put pressure on these entities in order to lift some of this pressure off of Assyrians. Um, lack of job is not, um, or not lack of job, but um, not having enough jobs for people in that region is for everybody. It's not just for Assyrians. However, when you are second class citizen, you will be the last one to be picked in case they can't find anyone. So um, that is something that we need to work on. People need jobs, people need security. And security is another piece that we are trying to work. Uh, I know Assyrian activists in the homeland are, have presented a Nineveh plan governance in order for survival and management of that region by themselves. And um, not just Assyrians, the Assyrians, Yazidis, and whoever is living there. And they presented what how democratic that will be but unfortunately, just like KRG that has its own region, we can have an Nineveh Plain region. That, but it can be, um, um, it was unfortunately after 2014, it was set aside and uh, was not taking care of that piece. But they're still working very hard. But with the rate that Assyrians are leaving right now, how feasible is that? These are questions that we have to ask ourselves. And where um, is there one location that most of the Assyrians are leaving to? And what are the challenges? I mean, obviously, security is one, but what are some other challenges for them to to return? Uh, of course, you need to feel that you can safely return. But is that the only challenge uh, or the most pressing challenge? Partly, yes. Uh, safety is. I'm so sorry if I'm taking over Yonan, but uh, please let me know if I... Uh, um, need to be corrected. But um, in the north, under KRG, they're safe. They're not um, being attacked for their religion or ISIS mentality that exists in Nineveh Plain or Shebex increasing in numbers and harassing Assyrians. That does not exist in the north. However, in north, um, they are not the, the discrimination in hiring. Uh, the discrimination, I mean, a lack of support for Assyrian um, schools that are public schools or government entities. And um, as I, I mentioned, the checkpoints that they're putting there, the pressure. And one thing that we keep, I keep uh, hearing from Assyrians from Iraq is that these checkpoints, people are telling Assyrians that you guys are peaceful and nobody supports you. That means we can do whatever we want. And not too long ago, they grabbed several of our lands and we have not been able to take them back. So when they come and and I saw uh, with my own eyes, the guy said, the back of my house, 
This whole land is my ancestors. It's from my grandpa to my father and to me. And they're not letting me use it. The government came and said, no, you can't do farming here. So these are things that are pushing people away from the land grabbing is something that is um, that needs immediate attention. Thank you. <laughs> there was a request, Carmela, if you'd like to put your email in the chat so folks can reach out about possible um, engagement uh, opportunities in the future. Yes. Uh, well, we have, uh, I don't see any other questions uh, in the, the Q&A at the moment. So I'm wondering maybe if, if Carmela and uh, Yunan, if you have any sort of final words you would like to leave with us uh, in the last few minutes we have together. Yunan? You are muted, Yunan. Sorry, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll translate. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity uh, that uh, allowed us to show uh, our Assyrian society work. Uh, you so. What uh, what tell uh, what speak uh, uh, Carmela about uh, <laughs> about pressure? We need pressure from uh, UN, from the uh, USA, from another to to push the government and central government about the land grabbing, about the discriminations, about the find the opportunity opportunities and. Uh, and the, this corruption in, the, in, in Iraq, who affected in this corruption? Just minorities uh, in uh, Nineveh Plain and uh, in uh, in our village in the north. Yeah. Thank you again for, for this opportunity. Thank you, Yunan. Carmela, if you have any closing words for us. Yes, I just want to let you guys know, Assyrians are really our resilient people. And um, they really have risen from every persecution and they have started building and moving forward. And the persecutions for Assyrians have been not just once, twice, third time, fourth time. It's been multi-generational. So psychological healing has been very important to them and is very important to them. Um, we are trying to find grants for different projects. We are working with um, different uh, political entities. Um, I am uh, working with International Religious Freedom, with United Nations. A Syrian Aid Society, as Yona mentioned, has a consultative status at United Nations for uh, issues for indigenous people. And... Um, we are knocking at every door. We are presenting everything that we can in order to raise awareness, asking for donation because we're building the infrastructure of the country. And also um, um, we need to address, uh, as I address the issues to State Department and other entities. If churches would like to invite me to go and present, I will present that. I have no problem with that. Um, and also, if anybody needs more information, kindly, I shared my um, email address. I truly want to appreciate uh, Churches of Middle East Peace Kyles. And um, truly, uh, this has been an opportunity for us to present the struggles and the achievements of Assyrian Aid Society. And uh, thank you, audience that joined and uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carmela. Again, we're so appreciative for you and Yunan for taking your time to educate us on these uh, critical you. matters and for telling us more about the work of the Assyrian Aid uh, Society. Uh, again, uh, we will share with all of those who have registered the links and the information that was uh, included here. And uh, we will also have this up on our YouTube channel so we know that there were those 
uh, who register that were not able to join live. And so we are, again, uh, very appreciative of all of you for spending this past hour with us. And we look forward uh, to you joining us as we continue advocating for uh, justice and peace for all uh, in the Middle East. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.